What's up, YouTube? Brian here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode I am always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And on this episode, we are picking up with the story of our faith, which is truly, bit by bit, a confession to die for. <music> Thanks for tuning back in. Welcome back to 1517 Films. If you're new, hit that subscribe button, hit the ring, the all notifications bell, and uh, be sure to like any videos that you find helpful. Share them with your friends. Uh, you can also find me on facebook.com forward slash 1517 films or a weekly podcast on Thursday evenings. You can find me at soundcloud.com forward slash Lutheran Lemonade, where we sit down with a nice, tasty, frosty adult beverage and we talk theology. On this episode, we are going back into the good old Book of Concord for the continuation of the story of our faith, part six, the new obedience. Now, if you've noticed, parts one through five really haven't included us. Well, part two kind of did, but it includes our concupiscence. It, con it uh, includes uh, the concupiscence, our innate desire towards Sin, concupiscence, I can talk. So the only thing really that the story of our faith has told us thus far about ourselves is that there's a God. We are not him. As a matter of fact, we disobey him all the time. This God is revealed to us by the majesty of, uh, even still, the, the, the majesty of what is a broken and fallen creation. But he is revealed to us on a personal level, in the incarnation of his son, who in his body and blood suffered on the cross in our place and bought us back from sin, death, and from the power of the devil. And we got into last time the office of the holy ministry, which is there to tell us, part four, that we are justified by grace through faith in Christ. Justification, a legal term, a term meaning we have been declared righteous. This article of our faith, which stands in stark contrast to mainland American Protestantism that says, I made a decision for Jesus. You can look at any Gideon Bible and see that it says, write down when you made a personal decision for the Lord. Really? I want to go to God's holy word and with my own hand write something about myself except for I, a poor, miserable sinner? Really? But, so it's been not about us, really. In all five of these parts, one follows from the next, which is why this is the story of our faith. And, 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 and are each of these parts worth dying for? Let's say we were Christians on the other side of the world. And someone came to us, we, we won't say, um, well, we'll say it, but we'll say it old school. We'll say, let's say the Turk comes to us and says, I will cut off your head unless you deny the Trinity. Well, that's the first article of our faith, isn't there? That there is a God, he is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons, one God. I'm not denying that. No, cut off my head. If the Turk should say, if you don't deny the divinity of Christ, I will cut off your head. Take it then. I'm not denying the second article of our faith. Or no, well, no, you're, I, I, I jumped ahead. I jumped to the third article. I think the Turk would, would <laughs> agree that we are sinful. Um, but then the third article that um, it wasn't the Turk, actually, that denied Article 2. That was Rome, actually, sadly enough, that denied Article 2 about our, our original sin and our concupiscence. But if we were asked to deny the the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which the world in, in America today asks us all the time, no, cut off my head. If we were to be asked to deny, and I'm sorry, but lots of Christians are that we are justified by grace through faith in Christ alone, that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except by him, I would rather you cut off my head than take that one away from me. The office of the holy ministry that God has called and put men in our lives to be under shepherds of the great shepherd, to bring to us this message of salvation, to bring to us the word of God, to bring to us the declaration of the forgiveness of our sins, and to bring to us Christ himself in the sacraments, in baptism, and and in the Lord's Supper. No, you will not take the office of preaching away from me. And now we come 
to this, this new obedience. This is where our sinful nature drives us to. This is where the Protestants are like, what about good works? What about good works? Rome even, what about good works? And they'll go to an obscure passage in the book of James that we are not saved by grace alone, but by works also. It's a terrible mistranslation of, 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 of the verse in James. Uh, we're not saved by faith alone, but works also. As, uh, uh, they, they'll say that's the only place where faith alone shows up in the Bible is we're not justified by faith alone. Um, you know what? That would be a really good episode for me to do actually on the book of James. And maybe that would be a good one uh, for Lutheran Lemonade. I think I'm excited. I don't know when this video is going to air, but that's going to be a Lutheran Lemonade. So once again, soundcloud.com forward slash Lutheran Lemonade. If you don't want to do that, every Lutheran Lemonade episode gets dropped on YouTube on Friday evening. You can actually watch. <laughs> so where do works come into play? Works come into play. Gosh, that was a long introduction. Works come to, into play once we have been redeemed. Once we have been called, gathered, enlightened by the Holy Spirit, once we have been set free from our sinful nature, we have this new desire from God to obey his laws, to obey his commandments. And there is plenty of mention of good works in the Bible. So let's start with chapter 6 in the story of our faith on new obedience. Our churches teach that this faith is bound to bring forth good fruit. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. It is necessary to do good works commanded by God, Ephesians 2, 10. Because of God's will, we should not rely on those works to merit justification before God. The forgiveness of sins and justification is received through faith. The voice of Christ testifies. So you also, when you have done all, and let's turn the page. <clears throat> The voice of Christ testifies, so you also, when you have done all that you were commanded, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. Luke 17, 10. The fathers teach the same thing. Ambrose says, it is ordained of God that he who believes in Christ is saved freely, receiving forgiveness of sins without works through faith alone. Now that's important. Uh, the mainline American Protestant might understand, I get all the scripture passages. It's one thing I love about you Lutherans. You go to the scriptures, but the, the church fathers? Why would you go to something another man says? Well, my bookshelf is filled with books, just like any other Christian's um, bookshelf is filled with Christian books, hopefully. But see, these are markedly different from mainline American Protestantism in that these are about Christ crucified for me and not about how I can get rich quick or how God wants me to be pro. But Christians read. We read the writings of other Christians, and it's beneficial to uh, the church that we should read the writings of the ancient church fathers. And it, it was important in, in, in the Reformation time because the Catholic Church is, this is the way it's always been. Cool, but what about where the church fathers said this, where you've strayed from it? So that's the purpose of that. So the good works must flow from the Christians. We cited Ephesians 2, chapter 10, good works that were prepared for us to do. Not good works that we chose to do for ourselves. And Jesus says in Luke 17, when we do talk about our good works, we should say, I didn't really do anything. I only did what was my duty. If you look at Judgment Day, when you see the stark contrast of the, the sheep and the goats, when Jesus says, you, when, when I was naked, you gave me clothes. When I was hungry, you gave me food. And, and, and the Christians go, when did we do that? And Jesus says, whatever you have done it to the least of these, my brethren, that you have done it unto me. But the unbeliever and those who have said, Lord, Lord, they'll talk about all their good works. We cast out demons in your name. We did this in your name. And Jesus says, depart from me. I never knew you. Good works have a place and they must flow from the Christian because the Christian has been grafted into the vine, which is Christ. And when a branch is grafted into the vine, the vine gives to that branch good fruit.
to bear. Our good works are given to us, predestined for us that we should walk in them, it says in Ephesians. So we can't claim our good works as our own. These two are given to us by God that we should do them. And we do them not because we're Christians, not because we want to make God happy. We do them because our neighbor needs them. This is a, a contrast to the culture that, that's me, 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 me. I got to look out for number one. If looking out for number one can serve your neighbor, if you can keep yourself healthy and strong and able to serve your neighbor, then yeah, you got to look out for number one. But if you're doing it so that you can provide for your neighbor to make life better for someone else, Martin Luther is famous for having said, God doesn't need our good works, our neighbor does. Good works play a huge role in the Christian life. But Protestants, like Roman Catholics, think that their good works are going to save them. Protestants, in, insofar as they believe they made a decision for the Lord and that was their work. I don't know how out of one side of their mouth they can say they're saved by grace, and out of the other side of their mouth they can say I made a decision for the Lord. I don't know. And Roman Catholics think that their good works will earn them time out of purgatory. We are saved by grace through faith alone. We are justified, the Bible says, declared righteous before God because of what Christ has done in our place. And Christ, in his mercy, having set us free from bondage to the law, gives to us good works to do that we should walk in them. Now, next time, we are going into chapter 7 on the church. Won't you join me then for the continuation of of the story of our faith. Until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.